I'm Sean Price Williams here with the Sweet East, uh, which is, I guess, the word they like to use, picaresque tale about contemporary America, starring Talia Ryder and uh, a lot of other people that um, I'm now friends with. <laughs> I think he's just a fantastic writer about films, so it made sense to... I, Nick Pinkerton is a great writer uh, on the subject of film, and I thought that maybe it'd be fun if he wrote a movie that... He, with not really thinking that we would ever make it, just, f just the exercise and to have a script that we could read and, and imagine the movie. Um, you know, we, we didn't really have a, a plan to, to of how to make it. We didn't know that it would really even be possible necessarily, so... It was all just kind of, for us, a fun thing to read and write. And we would, we would kind of collaborate on trips, train trips and things. We would sort of add to it here and there. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, we actually made it. <laughs> it was kind of all of a sudden, too. Nick and I both worked at Kim's Video in the early 2000s, except he was at the Avenue A store and I was on St. Mark's. So we were kind of rival stores, actually. Um, and we heard that they used to steal the money and all over there at that store. They were bad kids. So we didn't want to, and I was really, I was very serious about the store and, uh, you know, <laughs> keeping it going. So um, we never met at that time. We met years later. Uh, and I think that, you know, we, we didn't really bond over that connection. It was kind of, a, it's even still for years, like, a, oh, you were at Avenue A store, you know. <laughs> so that is very silly. Um, but then we really did find that we were just too, too uh, alike and, we became very good friends, and that's we, we wrote the script pretty soon after we became really good friends. Uh, friends of mine, I, Craig Buda, who was one of the producers, and I, we, we were making a film many years ago called Maniac City. Uh, it was kind of like just whenever we wanted to, and I was, I guess, charged with directing that. Um, it's a, it's. The title of director is kind of funny sometimes. It you know, means different things. But uh, I always wanted to be the one making the movies. And so directing, yeah, I always wanted to be a director. I never wanted to be a cameraman. I thought it would be a really great idea if someone else was the DP on the film because then I could actually watch how a DP works because I've never really seen how, how it goes. You know, I don't know what a DP does. I've always just done it the way I thought it's supposed to be. I thought I would learn a lot. I would learn a lot about lighting if I had... Uh, there's a Belgian cinematographer that I really wanted to reach out to, but at, at the last minute I decided I think I should just do it myself. And, and I thought, yeah, I thought it'd be yeah, better if I did it. I didn't really think I could direct not behind the camera. I, you know, I, I don't like really just watching monitors for a whole day. I can't imagine doing that. Um, I met Sean, like, October 2020. of 2020, yeah, and then we started filming like a year later, and I was just like, finally, a weird movie. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the stuff that you read, like, there's like a formula or a type of character that girls my age are supposed to play, and it was just weird, and I didn't understand it and wanted to reread it, which I don't feel like a lot of the time when I read a script, I'm like, oh, thank God, finally finished it. Then I was like going back and trying to figure stuff out. And yeah, I really like the character, she's weird. Well, mm, now there's this kind of like, that's a tough question. Right. Like, you know, I, I, I'm, I know I'm trying to say this in like a, a a way that makes sense. There's like this like self-righteousness that girls are supposed to have now and this like like in chargeness, which Lillian does have, but it's like in a more nuanced way, I would say. She's like a little confused about that. And yeah, I don't know. She's like an imperfect character. So she's not trying to be like a hero. She says some stuff, some amazing stuff, some bad stuff. And I don't know, I just like that it was all in a roll. Um, well, I feel like Sean really like trusted me. Lillian, he didn't give me a ton of 
direction. What, yeah, when I did it was usually just confused me and you both when I would sort of. That's not true. In. That's <laughs> not true though. No, you, you gave me like there were like specific things you'd be like. Say that again. Like, oh yeah, it was right. like, well, That's the thing when I'm behind the camera. I just can just be like, oh yeah, oh let's do that. Go, ahead, go back, go back. You know, usually it was probably because I was out of focus or something. But I could, we would just do it like that. You know? Yeah, and it was like the best way to work because like, Sean trusted me and I trusted him. We but we both like knew. I hope like we knew what kind of movie we were making and yeah. how we wanted things to go. So we just like we like could talk while we were filming it and it was really smooth. Yeah, it was fairly casual, I guess. In yeah. that way. We, you know, it wasn't a bit again because I'm behind the camera and talking. Sometimes I'm laughing while we're shooting and then yeah. she laughs. And then, you know, um, yeah, I don't know if the character is an empty canvas, but you know, I think that I think that the Lillian character is kind of a role model to me. I don't know, and, and I hope that lots of people are inspired to run away from home. Lots of teenagers after they watch the movie. <laughs>
getting to know each other and like yeah. what Sean liked and what I liked, I feel like. I don't think I've seen this new ending. No, no, that, the, la the Laughing with Gibby. Oh. <laughs> which is kind of even more, and this version that you haven't seen is even more out loud, the laughing. Oh, yeah. I yeah. haven't seen it with the I, new sound. I, yeah, I, I thought, yeah, you haven't actually seen the whole thing with the new sound. I always thought that it'd be funny if the poster that says, like, Talia laughs, like that Garbo speaks, you know, when she first did sound films. I don't know, because I, before we made the movie, every picture of Talia online, I mean, she just kind of looked serious, not smiling. And then That's in the, actually in just Eliza's not movie, true. In Eliza's movie, you don't smile very much, but I thought it would be great if we got you at least smiling in the movie. We got you laughing. But <laughs> I know you laugh in real life. I would meet these people like the day we were filming, and what I thought the scene was, or what I wanted it to be, it, didn't it just didn't matter. It was like really about what was happening then and there, which I think made film so fun. Yeah, and the Gibby scene in particular is, is an example. It wasn't it was written to be nope. you know, where she just laughs, you know. It was just another guy talking, telling a boring story. Um, but the laughing became really, uh, again, but yeah, I remember Nick was really mad, mad at me that day about how it was going. And then once Talia started laughing on camera, and we all realized, oh, yeah, that's what was supposed to happen here. But it was, that was like also, that's like why well, it was so fun. That was kind of fun. I was trying not to laugh because it was a serious scene, which made it even funnier. And I heard Sean laughing behind the camera. <laughs> yeah. We this shot the crazy. second half first. We shot from Rish to the the scenes with Rish to the end. Well, not and then the scenes with me and the family. That was that was later. Later, we started with yeah, Jeremy that, and I and Rish was the beats the first that we shot and then six months later approximately or five months later we went and did the whole beginning of the movie and the very end that was scheduled that way for for a reason for seasons i really i really was hoping for some snow for the last parts but we didn't get snow and then it was a very mild winter and then uh we did we wanted summer spring for the other stuff so and also simon's schedule worked out better that way but um yeah we didn't get to shoot it in sequence that would have been fun it would have been fun. I was afraid that she was going to just look different when we went back to shoot the first half. It looked like older or something. Then it would have been confusing. <laughs> Nick just said that we changed a lot. I don't know why he said that. Because um, we didn't really... I mean, we changed these because we were just adding stuff and making it more... You know, we were just adding textures and things like that. But we, you know, we definitely were never going to say the president's name because that would immediately, you know, or any reference to that guy would, is going to just date it. I don't understand why anybody would put his face or name in any popular entertainment. He should be forgotten, I think. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and the clothes and the, the styling of the movie is very not uh, appropriate to 2016, 17, 18. It's like some people are right out of a 90s movie. You know, the whole period costume that she ends Simon up in. Simon section. The Simon section, I don't know when that take, you know, would be, you know, the, look at those guys. Um, so yeah, it's not, we weren't like sticking it to any, any one period actually. And then we're, wa they're watching uh, the Griffiths Edgar Allan Poe movie. Yeah, that's a part of our na naughty, naughtiness and patriotism. You know, Griffith is obviously a really important filmmaker who, you know, just gets kind of, when his name comes up, there's just, you know, a couple of uh, unfortunate connections that people make quickly. And, and it's too bad because there's a lot to gain from those movies, even still. I think some of those, some of his films are, are, are really, really complicated, uh, fascinating movies still. So um, there's many, many references to, to Griffith inside there, like not direct ones, but, and the title cards, that kind of came later. He didn't write those into the script. I, I just, we sort of did that when we were in the edit. And we used actual Griffith's title cards originally. Actually, yeah, in, your, in the version you saw, it still said Griffith, yeah. We changed it, so, but there's still title cards. I know, I'm already, <laughs> I'm, I'm already asking, please show me the bad reviews, because I think they'll be probably better written and more interesting, so. 
I don't know. I'm not sure Nick feels the same way. Also, Nick has enemies that are critics, actual enemies. So I think that they'll be That's excited to say nasty things about us. <laughs> Aren't you excited about that? Yeah. <laughs>